In this video, I'll be teaching you guys about digital logic circuits and how to analyze their inputs and outputs. So a digital logic circuit is simply when there's a bunch of logic gates packed back to back. Now, if you don't know what these guys individually do, like what a NAND gate is, then I highly suggest that you look at the video link down in the description, Introduction to Logic Gates. But if you do know, let's go ahead and start the video. First thing I would like to mention is that this right here is a NOT gate, correct? Well, a lot of the times when you're looking at these circuits, they're not just going to draw the NOT gate. They're simply going to abbreviate it or make it simplified by just simply putting a circle in an input section or some output section, right? This simply just means NOT. So it only knots one of the inputs going into this OR gate. So what we have right here is simply a NAND gate, right? It's a NOT gate in front of an AND gate. But let's go ahead and look at the possible inputs. The possible inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, right? When there's two inputs, these are the only possible uh, uh, inputs, combination of inputs. Now, let's go ahead and look at, let's actually not put C here. Let's go ahead and look at this guy right here. So C is the output for the NAND gate, and D is the output for the OR gate. <clears throat> let's go ahead and analyze all of this. Well, we have an A and B. What people oftentimes do is actually draw brackets to, I guess, express their inputs. So if I draw, if I drew this, it would be 0, 0, 1, 1, and this would be 0, 1, 0, 1. Well, why am I writing it like this? Well, the first number in the bracket represents the first input. So 0, 0 represents the first input. The next input is 0, 1. Right? The next input is 1, 0 for A. A is 1 in this case for the third input. And B is 0 in this case for the third input. And A and B are both 1 in the fourth input. So just look at the input sequentially right? and uh, put them in order. And this is the same for C. C right here can be represented by brackets as well. So 0, 0, the first number inside the brackets, are the first pair of inputs, which makes sense. It's, it's according to our truth table as well. So 0, 0, putting it into a NAND gate, well, you simply get 1, right? If you put 0, 0 in a NAND gate, you get 1. So the first input is simply, well, the first number inside of these brackets is simply 1, and this represents the inputs for C. How about for 0, 1? For 0 and 1, Again, the NAND gate gives you 1. And for 1 and 0, the third number in the bracket, the third number in the C bracket is 1 again for the NAND gate. And 1, 1 in a NAND gate gives you 0. So these brackets simply represent the steps along the way uh, for your inputs and outputs. Well, why do you need this? Well. Because when you get into more complicated circuits, this will help you a lot, especially when there's just not gates randomly floating around and now there's like more OR gates and stuff like that. These brackets will help you rather than a truth table because you actually visually see where the uh, outputs are coming out of by putting the brackets next to the direct output location. All right. So now that we have this, this is what I mean by it will actually help you. Because I'm putting a bracket here. Why am I putting a bracket here? Well, I'm putting a bracket here because this bracket represents the input for in this NOT gate, the output for this NOT gate here. So this guy, this circle guy will NOT any input, correct? Well, our NAND gate output is getting spread out. So it's going in this direction and this direction. So for our first input right here, you have a 1 and a 1 here. Basically, just if you see like a split here, it just duplicates the, the uh, uh, whatever is being split. So the first output in this NAND gate is simply just a 1, correct? First in the bracket. So if a 1 is going up here and a 1 is going down here, 1 is going through here, 1 is going through here, this 1 actually hits this NOT gate first. So we can draw a 0 here. And again, for the second input, it's simply just a 1. A 1 is going down here, and a 1 is going up here again. So you have a 0 and a 0 and a 1 if you knotted all the inputs to this path up here. But this bottom section. Let's actually erase these ones. This bottom section's input is still the same as the output for the NAND gate, right? This NAND gate is going in a straight path 
Therefore, the inputs are still 1, 1, 1, 0 for this part of the OR gate. So you have 1, 1, 1, 0 here. Therefore, your inputs and your outputs, sorry, your inputs for this OR gate will look like so. 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1, 1, 1, 0. So the first input into this OR gate is 0, 1. Well, 0, 1 in an OR gate gives you 1 right how about zero one again well that's one zero one again that's just simply one and one zero well that's just simply one so what we have here is simply a gate that turns everything into one therefore if we write this in the truth table the output for d is just one 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 well now look at this circuit well, this circuit has, again, only two inputs, A and B. So the possible combinations for inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Maybe I should move this table up. OK. This guy should go up. So these right here are the possible inputs. Let's go ahead and analyze this. Well, this circuit right here has this little jump. And if you see this jump, that simply just means that this is just a continuous path. The reason why you don't write in a straight line is because you might confuse some intersection here uh, with the B uh, B path. So that's why people put like a jump here. Just imagine the wire going over um, the other. But we have A going down this path. We have B going down this path, and we also have a not gate here, right? So B goes directly into this AND gate, but A has to go through a not gate before going through the AND gate. So we can draw a bracket here to help us. Right? And we can also draw a bracket here and a bracket here. So for these large scale circuits, you usually would want to take this step by step, correct? Taking these step by step help so much more. And what helps you take this step by step is by using the brackets. So let's go ahead and not the AND inputs first. 1, 1, and 0, 0. Right? This is just simply all of these inputs knotted. And B goes directly into AND. So we should compare these two guys when we're going into the AND gate. So the first input in the AND gate is 0 and 1. right? 1 and 0 are the first numbers inside of the bracket. So these are the first inputs. So 1 and 0 going into an AND gate simply gives us, simply gives us 0. Remember, for an AND gate, both the inputs have to be 1 to get an output of 1. So 0 is the first input or the first output. Go ahead and erase this. And what's the next guy? Well, we have 1 and 1. Well, 1 and 1 are good enough for the AND gate to give you an output of 1. So 0, 1 are our outputs for AND, this AND gate so far. We have 0, 0. That's, again, just 0. And we have 0, 1. Again, just 0 for the AND gate. So C right here is just 0, 1, 0, 0. All right? All right, let's keep going. Go ahead and look at this OR gate now. Well, this OR gate just takes the inputs of A and B directly, right? So we can just simply compare these two guys and put them through this NOR gate. Sorry, uh, I meant NOR gate directly. All right. So this NOR gate, when you have 0, 0 in a NOR gate, it gives an output of 1. When you have z 0, 1, it gives an output of 0, and the rest are an output of 0 when you put these two inputs through a NOR gate. Okay. Well, now that we have these two guys, look what happens. Well, these inputs go along this path, and these inputs, or outputs, go along this path. So these outputs from this NOR gate become an input along this path to this new OR gate. So there's nothing along this path that's actually changing these inputs, so we don't have to draw another bracket. But we have to draw another bracket for this guy because there's a NOT gate here. So we need to not all these values. We get 1, 0, and 1, 1. So these become the new inputs, and these become the corresponding inputs for this OR gate. So if we were to write the last bracket right here for the output of E, let's actually write the output of D, 1, 0, 0, 0. If we were to write the last output, we'd simply be comparing these two guys in the OR gate because we already knotted. This right here is the already knotted version of your input. 
So simply put these guys through an OR gate. 1, 1. ORD is 1, 0, 0. ORD is 0, 1, 0. Right, the third inputs. And each bracket is 1. And the last ones are simply compared 1 and 0, which is just 1 for the OR gate. So your total or your final outputs for the E gate is 1, 0, 1, 1. And keep in mind, throughout this entire time, I just simply used these brackets, and they just help me, you know, keep keep this in mind. Trust me, when use the brackets because when I didn't use this in my class, I quickly lost track of what was going on. Um, these brackets just help you take these problems step by step. So at this point, it's literally just optional to keep watching because hopefully your teachers don't give you something this monstrous on your uh, tests. But we have three inputs in this case. And when you have three inputs, it gets a lot harder. So keep in mind, when you only have two inputs, there's simply four possible combinations, right? And when you have one, only one possible input, you have two possible combinations, zero and one, correct? Well, for three inputs, you have eight possible combinations, and they all look like this. So hopefully you see the pattern right now. When you have one possible combination, it's just simply two to the power of one, two to the power of two, and two to the power of three, right? So as you actually get more and more inputs, you have more and more possible combinations for the inputs. And in this case, we have eight. So for this problem, let's just work this out slowly, right? One by one and draw the brackets to help us. So this first row is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right. For B, you have 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And for C, you have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. All right. These right here are the possible inputs. But, of course, we're going to run out of space quick, very quickly doing this. Um, so I might have to do a little bit of erasing as I go in a little space management. So uh, let's, I'm, I'm trying to make this as least confusing as possible, but this is gonna be hard for you guys. So uh, what, what, what this bracket represents is simply this not gate. So this A goes straight into this exclusive OR gate, but the A has to be knotted first. So we need to knot all the values here. We have one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Right. I just knotted all the values inside of this A uh, bracket. Let's put arrows for everything to make it extremely clear. All right. Now, now that we have A here, we need to look at the two inputs for D. Right. So what is D? Well, D is an exclusive OR gate. Let's put it up here. So since D is an exclusive OR gate, our two inputs are this right here, the A, and B, because B goes directly into this exclusive OR gate, correct? So we just need to compare these values and these values exclusive with exclusive OR. So the first input is 0 and 1, right? That meets the standards for 1 for an exclusive OR, so the exclusive OR outputs 1 on the first uh, pair of inputs. The second pair is 0, 1 again, so it's 1. Third pair is 1, 1, which is 0 for exclusive OR. Next pair is 0, 0, which is 0 for exclusive OR. Next pair is 1, 0, which is 1 for exclusive OR. Next pair is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. All right, these right here are the outputs for the exclusive OR gate, which is equal to D. Well, now that we have this, let's go ahead and take a look at, let's look at E. Next, let's go, let's go in order uh, alphabetically. So for E, E takes in the output of D directly, right? D goes straight into this AND gate, but B goes straight into this AND gate, but has to hit a NOT gate first. So we need to draw another bracket that represents the NOT of B. So if we NOT everything here, we get 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. This is simply the opposite of everything right here. So now that we have these two values that are going straight into the AND gate, we need to simply compare them and write the outputs for them. 
for the AND gate. So we have 1, 1 for the first number. That gives you a 1 for an AND gate. We have 1, 1 again. 1, 0, 0, which is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, again 0. And the rest are simply just 0. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, <laughs> right here. OK, these are the outputs for E. Now let's go ahead and look at the inputs for F. OK, well, right here, the inputs for F are simply just C duplicated. So we just need to compare the number with itself, right? So we have 0, which is compared 0 and 0 going into a, not, into a NOR gate gives us 1. The only time when NOR gate gives 1 is when it's 0, 0. So let's go ahead and look at 1. Well, 1 gives us 0. This right here is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And the rest are zeros. So technically, this NOR gate is actually a NOT gate. <laughs> this just knotted everything in this here, honestly. All right, last things last. Right, we have E and then F. And both of these guys are just simply going straight into the G gate. No, no different, no tricks, no not gate along the way, just G. So we just need to compare E and F with each other into an AND gate. So we have 1, 1, going into AND gate gives us 1, 0, and 1 gives us 0. And since the rest of these values are 0, right, no matter what input F gives, you won't get a one value for this AND gate. So no matter what, all right, no matter what, this output for G will simply just be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Since you're going through an AND gate, if any of the values are 0, then you simply just get 0 for the output, right? If any of the inputs in AND gate are 0, then the output has to be 0 as well. So since there's just a straight line of zeros here, we can simply just ignore F, take a little shortcut, and just assume that the rest of the outputs are zero. So look what happens here. In this entire gate right here, the only time when you're going to get one is when the inputs are zero, 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 right? The first inputs are zero, zero, and zero, and the first output is one. And that's the only time when you're going to get an output of one. But yeah, the circuit, hopefully your teacher doesn't give you something like this on an exam. Wastes so much time. But as always, if you have any questions, put it down in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you for watching.